Okay, we got the CCA HM20. It says 16 unit driver, which is eight, which is a dynamic and seven BAs, I guess. That's my CCA KZ math. Let me go and unbox this. I'll do it very fast so won't waste your time. Okay, looking at it like this, it looks like it's got semi open back. I'm not sure if that's the case or not. When I go ahead and graph it, I'll figure that out. I have not graphed it up until yet. Um, they feel kind of weighty, so they're metal. They're not made out of plastic. The nozzles are uh, just an extension of that. So nothing really big to see here. There's nothing big to see with the cable, but let's go ahead and do that anyway. And there's the cable. It's pretty typical. This one has no mic. Yay, because I don't like mics. Um, and that's it. And also we've got tips. And that's it. Unboxing. Done. Let's talk about the CCA HM20 single dynamic seven balance armatures. Let's take a look at the frequency response graph. Two things to show you. This looks kind of like a cat profile and he's waving at you. And if I bring up the truthier hexa, it's like a slightly smaller cat doing the same thing. It's got a very similar upper mid treble profile as the truthier hexa. It's very interesting because it was the last video that I just did. So that's obviously the base is completely different. The base on the PLA is identical. The quality is completely different. The base on this is much better quality. That was a planar doing too much and had to do everything. This is a dedicated driver in the low end with balanced armatures taking care of the upper mids and treble. So this has far superior low end. It's got some energy in the treble. Um, I don't really find it to be a problem, but this is definitely aimed for people that like their low end. Let's talk about low end. Something on like a Roland 808. We got two Apocalypse. Now, a uh, track called Violent, Pack Like Sardines and Crushed in Box, Kill Jill, uh, Mass Attack Angel, things like that. With, this has got a new dynamic driver. In it. I think it's like a Zune 7 or 7, something like that. It's very potent, as the graph would indicate. It's got a lot of energy. The drops are with force. Um, as we move into bass guitar with stuff like Sultans of Swing, Black Sabbath, Violent Femmes, make note of. A track that I used to kind of interpret mid bass. This mid bass is going all the way to the ear game before it starts to correct itself. There really is not really mids or flat mids. And something like Dire Straits, Sultans of Swing, it, there's two impacts that are clear to the ear. One is the bass sounds very much present, slightly forward. It's not a bad thing depending on what your mood is and what you're going for. Mark Knopfler's vocals, male vocals are slightly husked. They're lifted, if you understand what I'm talking about. So they sound a little bit more meaty. That's not a bad thing, but it's definitely being done by the driver as opposed to how it was recorded. I find it to be fine, but it is notable that that does in fact happen. Um, as we get to drums, tracks like When the Levy Breaks, Moby Dick, um, Moving Pictures, Rush, with Neil Peart, a um, lot of energy with drum play. Um, the the fourth album by Led Zeppelin, the When the Levy Breaks kick drum is substantial. Uh, it's supposed to be, it sounds very substantial with this. You're not going to be lacking or wanting for anything when it comes to low-end delivery. As we get into vocals with stuff like Fleetwood Mac, um, Chris Cornell, um, and really everything in my library, vocals have a a warmish tint to them. They're, they're being lifted up with the tuning, and that's to be expected if you've heard other sets that have a bass line that's like this, greatly elevated in the sub bass and the mid bass careening all the way until you get to the gain. You're going to live... I think it impacts female vocals more negatively. Some Something like Stevie Nicks, who already has a husky female voice. This can sound a bit too much. For male vocals, it doesn't... It just makes them sound more... I don't know, full. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but for people that really want their female vocals to be clean and sweet, this is probably not the ideal replay. It's not bad, but it's definitely kind of interfering with that. As we get into strings so for Vivaldi, um, Concerto number one, um, this wouldn't be a set that I would... This is fine, actually, to listen to, but there's a, a tonal skew because of this bass delivery. 
something like the Fat Frequency Maestro SE, where they cut it at 300 hertz, though it's got an enormous sub bass coming down into the mid bass to 300. That actually sounds fantastic listening to Vivaldi, and I'm going to be doing a video for that set. When you take that lift and all the, go all the way to the gain, the tonality of the violins and strings in general sound a little bit overplayed. Um, and I won't get into it more than that. If you're into classical music, this might not be for you. If you're into rock and roll music and a lot of vocal-centric stuff, female vocals might be um, a little bit off to you. I, male vocals, not so much. If you're into uh, like an EDM, trip-hop, hip-hop, reggae type of libraries, this would definitely be something to consider because it's got plenty of energy, dedicated driver taking care of it, and the treble is not overly boosted to compensate for it. It's, it's actually not done badly. It's just that the bass is ever-present all the time whenever there's anything going on in the low end whether it's mixed on a deck or it's a bassist or it's a drummer they are they will dominate the replay because of the way that this is tuned um but they knew that when they put this together i'm sure so that's the cca hm20 it's a eight driver set a single dynamic and seven balanced armatures that's my opinion on it and i'm out come, come and look.